guys welcome back to another video from the world of english exams.com this video as you can see is going to talk about the ielts writing module many of you have been sharing your comments and uh, asking for the tips and tricks pertaining to the writing module and yes we are going to start a new series of the ielts writing module so do stay tuned to our channel to receive regular updates pertaining to this and in this video we are going to look at the format of the ielts writing test what are the various types of questions and what are some of the do's and don'ts on this module and we are going to also target the uh, grading descriptors that is the score depends on some descriptors some factors which we call band descriptors and yes we are going to cover the introduction part of it in this video so this video is going to tell you about an overview a clear picture of how the writing module actually is and uh, we are going to target both the academic and general training writing here so do check out the entire video and watch it till the end if you wish to know all the tips together okay so yes let's begin by understanding what is the format of the ielts writing test with reference to academic and general training okay so as you can clearly see this is how the format of the test looks like so first talking about the academic version task 1 would be a report and task 2 would be an essay so uh, if you are an academic test taker you are going to write both a report and an essay to complete the task and the score would be divided as follows three bands would be allotted for task 1 whereas six bands would be allotted for essay writing and hence uh, generally people take more time to write an essay and more emphasis is laid on essays whereas if you are a general training test taker you are going to write a letter as a part of task 1 which carries three bands whereas similar to uh, the academic test even the general students have to write an essay that carries double the weightage that is six bands so this is how uh, it is calculated guys and yes both the tasks must be attempted in order to get a score so it's uh, the perfect planning is required here and that we are going to talk about in the subsequent part of this video so yes now moving on to understanding some basic stuff some relevant information for the ielts writing test the first thing the total time that is given uh, for completing both the tasks is 60 minutes so within 60 minutes you need to complete both task 1 and task 2 so that is the criteria number 1 okay so ideally how should the time division be uh, made so for task 1 around 20 minutes should be allocated while for task 2 around 40 minutes should be allocated but let me tell you one point that see let's imagine that you are a student who can write essays really well maybe you have practiced writing essays or maybe as a part of your university education or your graduation you are a, a test a student who can write very fast so it might take lesser time for you to write the essay and if you are not a candidate who is very proficient with numbers so it might take a, a, a little more time for you to analyze the statistics such as a bar graph or a pie chart so this time division is set as a general thing but there is no set regulation that you have to follow it you can tailor it as per your own requirements but see to it that both the tasks are completed within the span of 1 hour now moving on to the third point the band descriptors must be read and clearly understood guys uh, in this video i am going to tell you about the overview of what these band descriptors are and yes uh, your band is given depending on these factors so it is very essential for us to understand this and uh, there is a public version of band descriptors also which i am going to explain separately in the next video so do check out that video as well now the fourth point is that a lot of synonyms and sentence structures must be used along with good vocabulary ielts is all about your ability to find identify and understand synonyms so the better you interpret synonyms or parallel expressions the easier your test can be 
and you can see for yourself how fast your pencil moves once you start uh, analyzing and using synonyms and collocations so we are uh, also going to start a new series for vocabulary uh, specific to a topic so do check those videos out now the fifth topic is that a proper structure is mandatory so whether you are attempting task 1 or task 2 regardless of that it is very essential for you to understand that a, a proper structure containing a good introduction a good conclusion and a well organized body paragraph is a must if you have to score a good band so it all depends on proper structuring and organizing so do not forget that and the sixth point as you can see is that punctuations are very important though many students would not pay attention to this point it is the changing factor and there are many students who uh, who get a problem and who get stuck at a score of 6.5 and not 7 just because of the lack of uh, punctuations in their essay and in their writing task 1 so we are not going to make that mistake we are going to appropriately use the punctuations now the seventh point is the word count since there is a time limitation and since there is a factor that your essay and your task one should look like a formal one and not like a story you need to avoid what is called narrative tonality that is you should not sound as if you're telling a story so it should be more academic more formal and educationally oriented so i hope you got the point you should not write your paragraphs as if you were telling a story now and the minimum word count for this process is for task one it is 150 words minimum let me repeat this a minimum of 150 words are required in this even the articles and prepositions and other small words micro words are also included as a separate word so be wary of that and then please count your number of words and for task 2 which is an essay the minimum word count is a 250 words and the maximum that you can extend is plus 30 more like that is 280 or roughly 290 words do not go beyond that guys but however there is no set limitation for uh, the upper limit but yes the lower limit or the minimum is 250 so you can extend it up to 280 or 290 see to it that you don't cross that because uh, you may have a, a factor that you might repeat the words or maybe they repeat the ideas which is not so great so avoid that and but maintain a minimum word count lastly the point which uh, most students are not aware of is that memorized responses would give you a score of zero yes guys i'm not joking it is a fact that many students memorize the whole of the essays and whole of the letters the whole task one kudos to them who do that but yes uh, all those efforts will go in vain because the examiners are smart enough to identify memorized responses and subsequently they would give you a score of zero if they identify that a lot of the answer is taken from any source over the internet so now having uh, understood these basic points let me also give you an insight into some of the do's and don'ts of the writing test okay so as you can clearly see on this screen on the left side i have given you certain do's and on the right side i have given you certain don'ts so first uh, let's look at what to do on the test the first point read the question and answer it completely which means you are not going to partially skim the text you are going to read the question clearly and understand what the question exactly is about so for example if the essay is about health you should not talk about uh, the let's say any other topic that is related to culture and heritage for let's say so you are only going to stress upon the given topic in the question for that we need to read the question and answer it completely if at all your opinion is asked 
you have to give your opinion if it is not us we are not supposed to be including our opinion we are, we are just going to discuss whatever is given and we are going to limit ourselves to that the second point which has to be maintained is justification ielts is all about substantiation guys so what you need to do is that if at all you get a relevant idea which you must get actually so you need to support your view and justify it with supporting evidences and examples of course these examples are uh, let's say you're giving a false survey to prove your point these surveys and examples need not be realistic yes you can give a fake survey you can give an example which sounds realistic but it is not real that means it might not happen in your real life but you're just stating it just for the purpose of substantiating your point so that is completely acceptable there's no one who's going to check back on whether the given point is a truth or uh, it's just made up there so it's how effectively you justify and relate it to the point is what is concerned the next point is start writing the task by paraphrasing the given question paraphrasing is a wonderful skill which all of you must learn not just for the writing task but also for the speaking task because uh, you should avoid repeating the words from the question you should not repeat the words from the question but the meaning of the question should retain this is called paraphrasing and yes i'm going to teach you not one but three ways of paraphrasing in my subsequent video so uh, do stay tuned to the world of english exam to know more about how to paraphrase and i'm going to give you a lot of examples for you to paraphrase within the set time and let me tell you if you learn the art of paraphrasing you are going to gain a high score for sure next the next point is use a wide range of synonyms and collocations yes yes you're going to use a lot of synonyms as we talked about we uh, use synonyms as a part of paraphrasing and also as a part of justification so synonyms are very critical and very important and so are collocations what are collocations what are the various types of collocations and all those points we are going to cover in the next video now the next one next point is use punctuations where needed yes punctuations give you credit the last point is write a crisp and good conclusion so the conclusion is as important as the introduction is so you should never skip writing the conclusion you have to write a good conclusion possibly with a predictive statement which means you're going to say something that might happen in the future or you are hoping that some change should happen in the future so yes this covers some of the things that you have to bear in mind but you should also bear that some points should not be done what are they the first thing to avoid on the ielts writing test is do not leave any open ended questions yes so you're not going to write uh, questions which are not justifiable by you so if you if at all you plan to write any question make sure that you give the full support evidence for that now the second point is do not give your opinion unless it is asked for yes there are a few question types where you should not give your opinion and if at all the question does not ask for your opinion please avoid that now the third one the third this is i must say a mistake which uh, some students make they start writing uh, the essay with proverbs or quotations which are strictly prohibited guys don't do that because all these proverbs and uh, such kind of flowery language is treated to be informal so it's not a formal way of writing so please avoid that for instance here i have given all that glitters is not gold so which means that so which means that you are relating it to something else but yes this is not an appropriate way to paraphrase in the writing test however you can use such proverbs and some informal uh, vocabulary kind of things in the speaking test not in the writing test guys now the fourth point to avoid is repetition of the words yes uh, you can repeat the words but not more than twice or thrice because 
it, you are not showing any range to the examiner if you do that okay so skip that avoid that the next one is do not stuff in too many ideas in a single body paragraph so you must remember the thumb rule that one body paragraph should contain one idea that's it you're not going to include too many ideas into one paragraph as it makes it confusing for the reader the last one is never skip the conclusion we were just talking about this but let me just repeat it once more that and one more important point to remember while writing the conclusion is never include any new ideas in the conclusion in fact the conclusion is nothing but the another way another form of writing the introduction so whatever you have included in, in, the, in the introduction you just rephrase it using synonyms and that would be the conclusion for example in your essay if you are giving a phrase that you are going to discuss about something in the conclusion you must say that i have discussed about this that's it so you should not extend the conclusion and make it into a uh, make it into a body paragraph again you should keep it crisp and short and don't include any new ideas in this paragraph it's just a summary a summation so uh, have you understood what are the do's and don'ts and with this knowledge let's also understand what are the various types of questions that you would be encountering uh, in the writing test now let's start the discussion by understanding the types of questions in academic task 1 academic task 1 is a report as i have already told you and there are various uh, formats in which the report questions would be asked in other words the question would look like this write a short report summarizing the pictorial representations or the charts the various forms of uh, report writing could be a bar chart a pie chart line graph process that is a step by step procedure uh then we can have a life cycle which is a cyclic process showing uh the different stages in the life of uh let's say a silkworm or a frog or a butterfly or whatever it is then there is this important question called map which means they can give you one single map and ask you to describe that or they may also give you two maps in one of the maps they can give you Uh, a developmental process that is not yet started and in the next map they may give you uh, a, a process that happens after the development so how a, how a piece of land looks before development and after development pre developmental activities post developmental activities or sometimes the maps can also be predictive that is currently there are no developments however they are planning to establish some facilities in the future so you need to use the appropriate tense while addressing the map then the next type of report can be based on a flow chart again a series of steps uh, you need to describe each and every step in the flow chart uh, without which the process will not get completed then the next one is a table uh, this table may give you many many figures uh maybe pertaining to the sales of a product in various countries and so on so you need to illustrate the main points that are given which are significantly seen in the table then the last one we have is combinations again as you can see towards your right the combinations can be of two categories similar combinations and dissimilar combinations so examples of similar combinations are two bar graphs two pie charts two maps etc so the similar uh, kind of pictorial representation will be given and you need to compare and contrast between them as well similarly with respect to dissimilar combinations you can be given a bar chart or a, along with a pie chart for example or maybe a life cycle with a process so all these dissimilar combinations also be understood and uh, addressed very well as a part of the task 1 in around 20 minutes of time so we are going to check out each and every question type along with proper illustrations and the way to interpret them in the further videos so stay, stay tuned to our channel to know more about them similarly now having understood about the types of questions in academic task 1 let's also make an effort to understand what questions can you see as a part of the general training task 1 yes so this is 
the general training task one overview you can see that it is a letter so there are three different types of letters out of which one will be asked uh, in your exam the first one is formal letter the second one is a semi formal letter and the third one is an informal letter so formal letters are basically written to uh, a person who is unknown to us so whereas a semi formal letter is when you know the person but the issue is a serious one an informal letter which is also known as a personal letter is written to somebody whom you know really well like a friend or an acquaintance so you can get any of these letters and the key point is to identify the type of letter just by glancing at the question so the faster you identify the better you can write the letter it is as simple as that and yes you would be given around 20 minutes for this task but planning is really important now uh, this is about the general task one and the academic task one now let's also understand uh, about the various kinds of essays and as i already told you the essay questions are similar i mean to say the question which is given is different but the types of essays are the same now let's look at them yes as i pointed here there are eight different types of essays one of which would be asked in your main exam the first one is discuss both views so here the views of two different sections of the community will be given to you as some people think that a is right some people think that b is right so you need to discuss both their views here as you can clearly see they are not asking for your opinion so it should be avoided whereas the next question in which it is given as discuss both views and give your opinion so here you should not only discuss the views as you have done in the previous question but an addition to that is that you need to justify and give your opinion as to which side you are supporting so you you still discuss both the opinions but you will tend to give your opinion your take on that as well now the third type of question is do you agree or disagree clearly it, you can see a phrase called agree or disagree which means you do not have an option to partially agree or partially disagree you need to completely agree or totally disagree you need to opt for either of the sides and you can't sit on the fence now the fourth point is to what extent do you agree or disagree here you can see that extent means the range which means i can completely agree or partially agree similarly i can completely disagree or partially disagree the ball is in my court and i am the decision maker here so i can choose to what extent i am agreeing but i need to provide a proper justification for that extent of agreement or disagreement now the fifth type of essay question is what are the advantages and disadvantages as you can clearly see the phrase is advantages and disadvantages that means i need to give both the advantages and disadvantages here make sure that you understand that it is advantages which means that you need to give a minimum of two advantages of course that should be the maximum number as well because we are not going to go on giving advantages as we do not have that much of time and yes we don't want to stuff in too much information as i have previously alerted you so you have you need to give two advantages and two disadvantages advantages in one body paragraph and the disadvantages in the other that's it similarly we have problems and solutions so a topic would be given to you and uh, you need to talk about what are the problems arising because of that and what solutions you can propose for that similarly you also can get causes and effects a problem will be given to you and you would be asked to give the causes for that problem and the consequences or the effects as you can clearly see here we have problems which is plural word so you need to give two problems similarly you need to offer two solutions so uh, and the next type of question is called a two way question or a double question which means a statement will be given and directly followed by that would be two questions directly two questions will be given to you and you need to give the answer for those two questions in the two body paragraphs as simple as that and the last uh, essay is do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages so let's imagine that 
uh, a topic is given to you and you need to talk about the advantages and disadvantages however here the differentiating point between the fifth type of essay and the eighth type of essay is that you can see a word outweigh which means are there more advantages for this trend when compared to disadvantages or is it the vice versa you need to justify whether advantages are more or disadvantages are more so that sums up the different types of essays and yes you can find the detailed description and uh, how to write the structure for these essays uh, separately i am going to target each and every essay question separately i am going to give you an example and show you how to write not only that you are going to write an essay with me sentence by sentence so do stay tuned now let's talk about the band descriptors as i promised uh, I'm, I'm also going to teach you what are the band descriptors and how you can analyze them in the next video but here i'm going to just introduce them to you there are basically four band descriptors uh, on the ielts writing test so the first factor which gives you 25% of the score is called task response that is for task 2 essay writing as well as you have task achievement as a part of your band descriptor for a letter or a report. Now there are three parts into this. The first part is read the question. Subsequently the second step is to develop the response completely and fully address all the parts of the question so you read the question develop the response and cover all the various segments in a question to get a proper score on this factor that is task response or task achievement now the next band descriptor would be coherence and cohesion so coherence and cohesion also would amount to 25 percent of your score and yes just like the previous point here also i have three separating points that together would give you 25 percent of the score the first point as you can see in maroon is generating ideas so coherence is nothing but generation of ideas that are relevant to the topic then uh, let's move on to the triangle in blue that says logically sequence the ideas not just generating the ideas but we need to organize them logically so then the uh, triangle in green is for cohesion which is linking the ideas together so what are the three steps here generating ideas sequencing the ideas linking the ideas so these three steps together will amount to 25 percent of your score now let's move on to the third uh, factor that affects your score that is lexical resource lexical resource or lexical response which also gives you 25 percent of the score just like task response and coherence cohesion lexical resource is nothing but using a range of vocabulary that is both active vocabulary and passive vocabulary so active vocabulary are those words which we commonly use whereas passive vocabulary uh, refers to synonyms that we don't use on a day-to-day -day basis so you need to have an amalgamation a mixture of both active and passive vocabulary to get a high score then also yes I, as i was telling you need to use less common uh, words that too precisely not just using the word but you need to make sure that they are used in the right context finally the last factor is grammatical range and accuracy as the name suggests you should use a range of grammar concepts like sentence structures simple compound complex compound complex sentences and so on you should also show uh, the variety of tenses active voice and passive voice variation that too accurately so the wider the range of grammar is the better you score so these are the four factors let's just go back and re uh, recapitulate the first one task response the second one coherence cohesion third one lexical resource fourth one grammatical range and accuracy so this covers the overview of the writing module and i hope all of you have understood this and you're going to proceed with your writing uh, and you would write many more essays and you can actually 
comment below on how you like the video if at all you like it do give it a big thumbs up share it with all your friends and don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned to our channel worldofenglishexams.com because you are going to get many such interesting videos on our channel from now on thank you